Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the cabled hat and this is with the pom pom. So you can decide to add the pom pom or leave it off. It's up to you. There are three different sizes in this one pattern and we have an 18 inch, 20 inch and 22 inch brim. So when we're working through these instructions you're going to notice is that we're going to keep it all pretty much similar to each other but then the small size here diverts here and then the medium size is here and then the large size is here. So you see once you get into row round number 11, 11 and 12 for the small is here, 11 and 12 for the medium is here and then large 11 and 12. Once you've just completed your instruction for whatever size you're working on then you progress to all sizes then working through the remaining of this section here and that will take you all the way to the end. In today's tutorial just for demonstration reasons I am going to teach you the large size because I want this for myself but I'm going to rely on you and I will cover the instructions then for the small and medium just to uh, read those to you to make sure that you get it before you can carry on. So I'm going to be using today Red Heart with Love with a five and a half millimeter size I crochet hook and you also need a six and a half millimeter size USK hook in order to complete this as well. So when we're looking at these instructions it says with the hat with the larger hook that's the six and a half size K and you'll be doing that and usually it's near the end which if I just zoom here somewhere usually near the end it's going to tell you to use a smaller hook in order to reduce down so that you have a little bit of a tighter brim area as well. So without further ado let's head on into this pattern and let's get ourselves started and let's begin. So let's begin today's pattern with an adjustable ring. It's also called a magic ring. Put the yarn strand in front of your hand like this. This is an intermediate level video. We do have videos for these magic rings on our channel if you need a much slower version. So just putting it in front, just turning it over and cross like that. Then slip the hook underneath that yarn and pick it up and then chain one to lock it like that. So now we're going to start with round number one. Again if you need a slower video I'll put a link in the more information of this video just in case you want that as well. As we begin today all the sizes are the same at this point and when I tell you then we're going to divide off into the small, medium and large but for now we're going to begin. So we've already just locked it with a chain one so you don't need to chain one already and you're going to put eight single crochets into the adjustable ring. When you crochet, crochet right up over top of the two strands itself so that you can actually pull it shut at the end. So that was one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven and eight. Okay so I want to verify that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Once you're happy with it just pull this strand and that will tighten in and close off the center and pull it as tight as you can. And before you move on I want you to slip stitch to the top of the first one. If you're not sure count it back. It's the eighth one away and just slip stitch and we're not quite done yet. So pulling that still that other piece I want you to put this into a, a tapestry needle and the only way to really secure that at the end is to be able to hide it with a tapestry needle. So putting it within a tapestry needle just right where it is I want you just to glide it back and forth a total of three times into the center and this will prevent that from falling out. So if you trim that and don't do this it will definitely fall out on you and it will give up the total top of your hat. So back and forth three times and then you can cut that right down into the project and the top of your hat is now closed and you're going to turn it back the other way and now let's begin round number two. Because this is an intermediate level I'm going to give you the set of instructions for the repeat and then let you do it and then you can pause me then. So round number two you're going to chain up one and then in every stitch going around there's a total of eight of them. You want to put two single crochets into each of the stitches. So two stitches are two single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around and then when we come back just a slip stitch it to join it to the top of the very first single crochet that you started with. Please do this all the way around two single crochets in each. So at the end here just join it with a slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So in future I'm just going to say just come all the way around join it and then meet me back in the next round. Let's begin round number three. 
In round number three we're now going to start those looping effects that we would like to do. So to do that we're going to start off in chaining one and you wanna put two single crochets into the first stitch. So one and two and watch what we're doing. So those cables are made up of chain tw uh, chain twelves. So just chain twelve now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12 and then simply just come to the very next stitch available to you and I want you to single crochet into the next stitch and then in the next stitch after that put in two single crochets. So one and two. So to recap then after that's done chain 12 again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then coming into the next one, so just right there, single crochet that first one and then the next one has two single crochets and then do that all over again. So chain 12 and etc. Please do that all the way around. You should have eight of these chain 12 um, spaces going all the way around. When you come around on number three, you're doing your chain 12. There is one stitch left. So it's just gonna be a single crochet and when we started if you remember there was two single crochets before we did the chain. So then that keeps it in sync. So just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you did. Okay and that completes off round number three. Make sure you do have eight of these chain 12 spaces going all the way around and let's move on to round number four. As we begin round number four make sure the loops are staying towards you. So don't let them stay in behind okay. So let's uh, begin round number four. Chain up one and right where you're sitting I need you to put in two single crochets to start. So one and two and putting the loop in front of you what you have to do then is just do one single crochet in the next and just move this in front and go to the next single crochet that's after that loop and single crochet. Okay so that keeps that loop in front. So let's review again. So the next one will have two single crochets so one and two. The next one is one by itself and move this in front and the next one just after it has one by itself. Okay so let's review again. So there's two into the next one and two. One before the chain 12 loop. Move it in front and then one directly in the single crochet after the loop and continue that same idea going all the way around for round number four. So I'm coming all the way around. This is the last chain 12 loop. I've already put in there a single crochet just before it. There's only technically one stitch left after that loop. So keep it in front, single crochet it and then join to the beginning one where you put two single crochets in the beginning. And so make sure all these loops are facing up so the back is completely empty and let's move on to round number five. So round number five we're going to chain up one and you'll put two single crochets in the first one. So the repeat pattern for this one is really quite easy. So there's two in the first one and then there's gonna be a single crochet in the next three in a row. That's it. So then there's two in the next one, one and two and then the next three are by itself. So three by itself. So please do this all the way around for round number five. When you're coming up to the end of number five there's just three single crochets that are by themselves. That's nothing special that's just keeping in count and then you're just going to join it to the beginning single crochet. So let's begin round number six. Round number six we're going to grow out so just chain up one and then it'll be two single crochets in the first one and then this time there's four single crochets by itself. So one, two, three and four and then you'll put two into the next and then four by itself, two in the next and four by itself. Please do this all the way around round number six. So I just finished round number six. I have everything done. I slip stitched. I'm ready for round number seven. So round number seven we're going to start introducing these chain spots again. Let's begin number seven. So let's begin number seven. You're going to chain up one and you'll put two single crochets into the first stitch. So one and two. Then you are going to put in four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three and four. Now you're gonna add a chain 12 space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then simply come into the next stitch and single crochet and that's the end of a repeat. So the repeat is two single crochets in the first one, four in a row, chain 12 and then one into the last. So let's just do it one more time. So the next one has two into the same one and then you'll have four in a row. So one, two, three, four, then a chain 12, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then single crochet into the one after that and start the repeat all over again. So two into the next, four in a row, chain 12, one into the next and then start that again. Please do this all the way around, round number seven. So coming to the end of round number seven, I'm just single crocheting in the last one and then just joining it to the top of the first single crochet. So now the next three rounds, eight, nine and ten are next and they're each the same round. So rounds eight, nine and ten are all the same. You're just gonna do one single crochet in each. So chain one and put one single crochet in each. As you're passing by these chains, make sure that you fold them in front and keep them in front of the work so that they stay on the front side and when you get all the way around just slip stitch and then just um, chain up one and do one single crochet again. So you're doing the last one before the loop, fold it forward and do the next one right after the loop and keep that in front. So I want you to do rounds number eight, nine and ten just single crochet in each going all the way around and I'll see you the, uh, the next one round number eleven where all the sizes then change from this point forward. So right where we are is the end of round number 10. So round number 11 for all the different sizes are different stitch multiple. So in order to continue the circumference to be slightly different. Now the circumference when it comes to the end will either be 18, 20 or 22 inches. So the small will be 20 or sorry will be 18 inches. The medium will be 20 inches and the large is 22 inches. I'm going to proceed to the large one for myself but I'm gonna walk you through now uh, the small size then medium and then continue along with the large. For those doing the small size all you just need to do is chain up one and do a single crochet into the first six stitches. Then you're going to chain 12 and then put another single crochet into the next stitch. Then you'll start again. So single crochet into the next six, chain 12, single crochet in the next and you're gonna repeat that over and over and then at the very end you're just going to uh, slip stitch to the first single crochet. Then in round number 12 you're going to repeat round number 8 which is just chain 1 and do one single crochet all the way around and then slip stitch to the first. So this is a small size, this is what you need to do. Let's move on to medium size next. So medium size has a growth in it where the small size didn't. So in the medium you're going to chain up one and put two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next five stitches, then you'll do your chain 12 and then single crochet in the next stitch. So the repeat pattern will then be two single crochets in the next stitch, single crochet into the next five stitches, chain 12 and then one single crochet in the next and you'll repeat that over and over and at the very end you'll slip stitch to the first single crochet. In round number 12 it's the same as round number 8. Round number 8 was just chain 1 and put one single crochet into each and then that would then take you then to the round number 13 which then will be after this. So I'm going to then move on to the large size next and actually do this on camera. In the large size we're going to work the same as round number 11 of the size medium. So I'm going to look here and follow this information here. Now it says round number 12 we're going to do another growth. So we're gonna make it slightly bigger than again and then once that's done then we continue to repeat uh, round 8 for rounds number 13 and 14. So no matter what size you did um, we're all gonna end up here and the all sizes of round number 13 and 14. I'm going to move on to round number 11 now. So the medium size is going to be showing on how to do that, this size up here and then we're going to then do this size here for round number 12. So it's the same. So you get the, the best of both worlds. Let's uh, begin the large size now round number 11. Let's begin round number 11. So th this is the large size and it's the same as round number 11 for the medium size. So if you wanna see it, it can be done this way as well. So you're just gonna chain up one and do a single crochet in the first stitch two of them sorry, two into the first and then one single crochet into the next five. So one, two, three, four and five and now you're going to chain your 12. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and you'll do one single crochet in the next one right after that and then begin the repeat pattern once again. So the repeat pattern just to recap is two single crochets into the next and then you'll put five single crochets in a row, chain 12, one single crochet after that and that's the end of that repeat. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 11. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm just single crocheting into the last one and then just joining it. So if this was the medium size all you just need to do then is just chain up one and then do one single crochet in each. Make sure that you do move these in front. But I am working on the large size so let's do round number 12 then and we're gonna do another expansion round again making sure that these are in front. So let's move on to number 12 in the large size now. In round number 12 you're gonna chain up one and you'll put two single crochets in the first one. So one and two and this time there will be seven singles in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and then just move this in front, keep it in front and go to the one right after it and this is seven. So starting again and you'll notice that it's the first one of the grouping of two. So it'll be two singles in there and then seven in a row. Again make sure that loop is in front and then two into the next. So please do that all the way around. Round number 12 for the large size. So I just finished off round number 12 of the large size. I'm now ready for rounds number uh, 13 and 14 and all of us, the small, medium and large will all pick up in the same part, uh, all, all from the same part in the next one. So let's begin round number 13. So rounds number 13 and 14 and welcome back to the small and medium sized people. So what we have here is that we're moving on to 13 and 14 and all you're just doing is just chaining up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. Please do this for round number 13 and 14 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm just finishing up number 14. I just slip stitched it and that's it. So rounds number 15, 16, 17 and 18 is a repeat for several times before you're getting to the very end or the brim of this hat. So we're gonna take you to the instruction. I'm going to show you a few things that you may wanna do for yourself and then I'm going to demonstrate. So let's do that. So round number 15, all sizes are in the same instruction. So if you're not familiar with how the sizes are changed, this here, the first number is small, medium and large. So you're going to choose the number that matches the size hat. So in my case I'm going to do eight. So what I would do if you were not watching me is that I would circle the number eight for myself. So if you were doing the small medium, circle the ones that make sense for you. Okay, so in the brackets it's going to be the last one for me. So if you're doing the small size, it's one uh, single crochet in the first six and then chain 12 and then one single crochet in the next single crochet in the first six and etc. So it's what you already know. It's just a difference of account. For the medium you're going to single crochet in the first seven and then chain 12, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next seven and then chain 12, single crochet in the next and you'll do that all the way around. For the size I'm working on for the large, I'm going to single crochet in the first eight, 12, uh, uh, 12, <laughs> it's uh, chain 12 sorry and uh, one single crochet in the next and then single crochet in the next eight and then etc. So we have to repeat the rounds number 15 all the way to 18 just like this several times. So it says once we do it once it says repeat rounds 15 to 18 four more times. So what I do here is that I'm going to check it off and I circle the top because the top is the one that has that special instruction of the number that you will choose. So I'm going to just write down the number eight here. So when I'm thinking about what I have to do, I'm just gonna keep an eye on that. So the first round is going to be that one with the chain 12 and the rest of the three are just one single crochet in each. Then you're going to do your 12, uh, chain 12 again and then single crochet in the next three. Uh, rounds and etc. and you everybody will end up at the end of number 34. So I will demonstrate round number 15 using the large size as an example and then 16, 17 and 18 are just single crochets and then I'm gonna leave the remaining of this section here for you to do on your own and then I'm going to pick you back up here and we're going to begin doing the uh, beginning or like the brim area of fastening in all those chain 12 loops. 
So let's begin round number 15 choosing the size that you were doing. So chain up one and you will do one single crochet in either the next six, seven or eight and in my case it's going to be eight. So it's uh, that's one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So you may have a different count there depending on the size you're doing. Then you're going to chain your 12. It's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then coming back into the next one. So you'll single crochet the number that you circled or sorry you'll single crochet in the next one and then the next set then is the number that you circled. So in my case it'll be 8 and then chain 12, single crochet the next and then 8 chain 12, single crochet in the next and you'll do that all the way around. So please do this all the way around, round number 15. Now that I finished round number 15, it doesn't matter what size you were doing, the next three rounds are going to be the same. So 16, 17 and 18 it's just one single crochet in each. So what I want you to do th at that point is that once you get those three rounds done all the way to 18, I need you to repeat then rounds number 15 to 18 four more times. So I showed you on my little list and I checked it twice is that that's what I would do and check it off. So I just did number 15 so I'm gonna check it and then I'll do three single crochets in a row and then 19 is the same as 15 when I'm looking at it up here. So I can just follow those instructions and check it. So I'm gonna meet you at number 34 at the end of number 34 in just a few moments from now but I got a little bit of homework to do in the meantime. So I'm just gonna put on some music and enjoy and I'll see you back here in just a second. When I last left you I was telling you to check it off on your list and so this is what it looks like at this time and so you have all of these loops all the way to the top. So now we have to fasten off and I'm gonna show you how to do that next and then we have to start looping all these before we can proceed further. So now that's the really fun part. So as I mentioned I've got everything that I need to get done and I've already cut this yarn and I'm just gonna pull it through. This is the only time I'm gonna show you the fastening off technique in today's video. So you're just gonna throw this through a tapestry needle. It's the best way to do it uh, especially if it's a wearable like this especially if you have to wash it. And so you wanna turn it to the inside of the project and just go along the inside of the stitches only. So don't be hanging out on the outside. So when you turn it over you barely see that it's in there. So going over once. Okay and when you pull on it just pull taut but not changing the shape of your project. Go through twice and then third time is the charm which locks it completely. So what I want to do now is that I wanna loop all those loopy thingies in and I'm gonna show you some advice that's not on the pattern. So here comes the fun part. We're going to loop from the top of the hat all the way down sequentially going all the way through. Now it doesn't say this on the pattern but I, I have done this technique before. So when you look at it you can see that it's a horseshoe shape. If you take this loop just move your hand around and just flip it over once it'll cross over. It does a nicer look at the very top piece. That's the only one that you have to do. It's just the top one. So it's gonna look like this and just turn it just over. Then you're going to reach down to the next one. So those ones you don't twist and you feed through the loop and just pull on it a bit and then continue to feed through the loops all the way to the end. I find this part really quite fun <laughs> to the point where I've actually literally pulled it out just to do it again because I loved it so much because you know <laughs> oh Lord. So what we want to do is that we wanna go all the way to the base and then we're just gonna let it hold there because the next round we're gonna secure that into place when we go to crochet but we have to have all these done first. Okay so when we go to crochet we're going to lock that into position. So starting back at the top for the next one again look at it and give it a twist and then start looping all the way. So let's do all these next and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now all of the braiding has been done. So all the cables. So they're all now holding for the next round as we're going to secure that into place. And let's begin round number 35. So round number 35 is similar to round number 15 in the sense that we have to pick up and do the numbers that is suggesting. So we have the small, medium and large. So circle the number that of the size that you're working on. In my case I circled seven because that's the large. With the right side face and join B uh, with the first single crochet 
with the single crochet the first one and single crochet in the next and then choose your number. So my case will be seven. Inserting the hook in the first chain 12 loop single crochet into the next stitch. So all it's telling us to do we're not increasing at all. We're still using the six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook but the difference is is that when we come across these loops on these particular stitches uh, in the in the next uh, one like this it's just securing it with the single crochet in position. So let me show you how that's done. So I'm going to do a standing single crochet. It says to attach chain one one single crochet in the first but I'm just going to just do a standing single crochet and I'm attaching to the first one that we we ended with. So we'll do this. So just put it onto the hook and put it over and pull through and you have two loops pull through two. So it's stated to do a, a single crochet in the first single crochet. Join with the single crochet in the first single crochet which is this one and it says single crochet in the next and choose the number. So my case it will be seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now what we have to do is that we have to grab this loop, insert your hook through that loop and then start single crocheting in the next what we have. So single crochet in the next eight it says. So single crochet that with the loop stuck into position. So that's one and two, three, four, five, six, six, seven and eight. And if you feel like it should have been in a different position then by all means do it, right? So if you felt like maybe this is the wrong stitch it's in and you wanna shift it there's nothing stopping you from doing that. So just put it on there and you're going into that one. So that was starting with one again and go all the way to eight. And so you're essentially locking these into position. So go all the way around and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around to the end of number 35 and everything has now been locked into position. So I'm doing my last one and then I'm attaching. So I'm going to keep this same color going on for rounds number 36 and 37. The difference is is that this hook is no longer available for us. We wanna switch to a smaller hook so that we can tighten up this band a little bit. If you wanna do rib stitching you can so you can do that. If you wanna do rib stitching you can just chain three, double crochet in each around and then start your front and back posts if you would like to. I'm not gonna demonstrate that here but that's always an option. So rounds number 36 and 37 are next and then I'll be right back in just a moment. So round 36 and 37 is just chain up one and you're just going to apply one single crochet in each using a five and a half millimeter size uh, eye crochet hook. This will tighten it up and just go around and do two rounds of this with this color and that will cover you then 36 and 37 and then we'll finish off with 38 and 39 with a different color to finish off. And if you don't wanna change color that's up to you as well. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. So do 36 and 37 now. I'm gonna leave a little tip for you here. If you feel like this is way too big for you and you made the wrong size all you can just do is that every now and then just put two together as a two together single crochet. This is an intermediate level project so you may have probably know how to do that already. So just I would just consider like eliminating out a few stitches to tighten it up and I would do it on this round here. This is round number 36. So then 37 and 38, 39 will all then just kind of fall in line. So you can do that at any point and just put two together and tighten it up a little bit and then slip stitch when you get all the way around which will be in my case and just right now. So you can start your next round and I would try to just eye it up and try it on as you go. And so round number 37 is just one single crochet in each again and I'll see you back here in just a moment. I'm coming to the end of number 37 and I am just going to slip stitch. I am going to fasten off. I already showed you how to do that and then all I need you to do then is do number 38 and 39. You don't need to show, see how that's done. So you're just gonna join it and then just do two rounds of single crochet and then you're done. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. We're gonna talk pom pom. I'm gonna put a pom pom tutorial at the end of this today's video. You can use a store made one or you can actually do um, your homemade one too. That's up to you or you, you can ax it off and not do it at all. So I'm going to show you how to apply a pom pom. So I have an extra long strand that's coming out through the base here. I double strand it just for thickness and for strength. And what I want to do is that I wanna put this needle through this ready made ball. So I would do the same thing. If you're doing a handmade one you'll have the strands that um, you'll have left over and you'll feed those strands through. 
and then you can tie it on the other side. So right here I can just feel the material. So if it's harder to get through that means that it's gonna be really quite attached. Okay so now I just pulled the strand through the ball and I wanna come to the opposite side. So see the where it came out? See this is the middle hole. I wanna come to the opposite side and then back down into the hat. I wanna pull through. So what I'm gonna do is equalize this yarn pretty much and I'm gonna cut this like this. So at this point you wanna tie it onto the top of this hat. So just in the inside, just if you have extra long strands you may wanna cut them down a little bit. And you wanna tie it into a bow tie. So using the two strands together And what happens is if you gift this to somebody or they buy it from a craft show they can just undo the tie and the ties on the inside of the hat and therefore you'll have the pom pom attached permanently and this is a cool way to do. So this actually fits me so I'm really nice and, uh, nice and happy. I did do some decreasing as I mentioned in the tutorial but what right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you then the video on how to make the pom pom from uh, yarn itself and this is it. So I'll see you later my friends and have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye. Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a pom pom with a pom pom maker that you may find in a store. I picked this one up here in Walmart and I know that they're in uh, major craft stores across North America as well. So what this is is that there's different sizes of uh, pom pom makers. This particular kit came with all four sizes and they when you open them up you realize that you think that they're broken because they're separate units like this but in actual fact you have to have them separated in order to do it. So some people use uh, for pom-poms they use cardboard or they could use their hand in order to make pom-poms. These have to I have to say they make one of the most perfect uh, pom-poms you'll ever see. So today I'm going to show you how to operate these and it's the same operation for all sizes and I will show you how to do that. So let's begin to show you. So just put the two sides okay the outside hinge is going to be toward the outside and the other one is to on the other side. Okay, match it up. Use the divots to hold just like you see here and just kind of pin it together. So you're going to do it in a way that is going to just hold it together as you do it. Okay, so it's just gonna be good and uh, they don't need to match each other up there. It's just as long as you're pinching here and it holds it and it just it's just lightly holding it. Once you start wrapping it it'll stick together without you having to hold it uh, really quite tightly. So it's just a matter of starting this and getting it wrapped around a few times. So I'm gonna use my left hand to wrap and all I wanna do is fill in the space on this whole half side. So I'm not gonna jump over to the other side as of yet and I just want to continue to wrap. So I'm gonna go right up to this edge and I'm gonna go right up to this edge. Now you can either count it out if you want to if you would like to be really super super accurate uh, with your counting so that it's equal on both sides of this tool or what you can just do is just wrap it and make it look like it works. Okay so because this is variegated I'm kinda just jumping around a little bit and what I wanna do is I wanna continue to wrap now and as you get more and more it just sticks together on its own. So once you're satisfied with it now you can just cut your yarn. So now I'm gonna jump to the other side and pinning those two other two together. I'm gonna do the same thing and just start it and wrap again like I did the other side. So continue to wrap this side and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay once you're satisfied with it all you just gotta do is trim this other yarn. So what you wanna do now at this point is that you want to close this contraption. So just close it and also open up these clips and they are locking on to its neighbor but not uh, opposite to each other. So just close it. So just lock it and lock the other side. So now the entire ring is now uh, full and now we're going to then separate these and being able to make the pom pom. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab our scissors next. So with the space that is existing in between just like you see here we're gonna run our scissors through and we're just gonna start on one side and work our way to the other side. So just going right directly in half okay and we are just gonna gently cut. Okay just do a few at a time if your scissors can't handle it and you do not wanna let this ring go. Everything is being held into place as you're, you're doing it. Okay. 
Now the size of your pom pom is varied on the size of this ring but also how many times you wrap it as well. And you go right to the end. So you wanna physically see this gap as you go. So now you're gonna go back to the other side. Do not let this fall apart on you. Again holding everything together and you're gonna do the other side now. There's nothing holding these rings together so you kinda wanna hold on to it at that point. So right now I'm about to hold which I already am and I go right to the end. So now the rings are actually completely separated from each other but then it's still in the inside. So just gently put it down and I need you to grab enough strand. Now if this material is not strong enough to be tied then you gotta use a different material in order to do the tie in the middle. So what I'd recommend for you is that grabbing the same amount of yarn you're gonna wanna tie about two, three or four or five times in the middle in order to really get it to, to separate or to get it to really be tight. So just grabbing your yarn and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a, an extra um, strand of string as I'm being able to tie it to my project. So just slipping in between the two gaps, the gap spaces as you see here and you can turn it around and just bring it to the other side. Again being gentle about it and just bring it through. And do you see the hinging here? There is a space so the yarn will go in between that too. And you just wanna pull it through. And so just you start to tie your little knot here. So just let's do that. So let's just put that through and really give it a good tug. And this is going on the inside of this. Pull it enough so that it's gonna form it but don't pull it enough that it's gonna ruin it. So then I'm gonna go to the other side now, turn it over and I'm gonna tie this side. So see how I just tied the other side. Now I'm gonna come to this side and tie this side and I wanna do that a few times. So I'm gonna use these two strands that are falling out as my tie strands to go to the project. So I wanna keep those and I don't wanna damage these strings. So when I go to work with this I'll leave them out. So I'm gonna tie one more time and then we're gonna release this pom pom from the tool. Okay so there's my strand. So now I'm just gonna hold it by those two strands. So now I can open up the tool by just releasing this, these clamps on both sides. So they're on both sides of the work here. And all I can do is to open it up now and it will release the pom pom. So there's one out. And here's the other one coming out in a second. And there is my pom pom. So now holding it by the two strings so you don't accidentally cut it. Now you just fluff it up. Okay, look how perfect that is. It looks nice and full. And you're just gonna take your scissors then and just any ones that are just abnormally long or just didn't sit right or just kinda looks like it's not working well. Then you're just gonna safely just trim it like this in order to form the pom pom like so. And give it a good shake. And look at it and that's how you would create a pom pom with that. So take this other than string strands that are here and you can attach it to the top of a hat really quite easily and that's how you use all these kind of little tools. So the size of the tool uh, then gives you the size of the pom pom. So if you look at it from this point of view, see this pom pom? It kind of matches that. So if you're looking for a bigger pom pom, you can use a bigger tool like so. You'll have much bigger and if you want smaller then you just use a smaller like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Enjoy and hopefully you enjoy your new pom pom. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.